happening right now at 5. The midterm elections is just about two weeks away. What's being done to increase voter turnout this November? Located the shooter, an engaged head shooter in, in uh, exchange of gunfire. The suspect was struck uh, and uh, transported from this location and that suspect has since uh, been pronounced deceased. In developing news, a school shooting in St. Louis kills three people. What officials had to say about the frightening scene this morning. And your trip to the grocery store could get a little bit easier. The brand new service, Schnucks, is launching. From 13 WREX, your weather authority, this is 13 News at 5. Good evening. The midterm election is about two weeks away and voter turnout numbers are surging. Yeah, the gubernatorial election will take place November 8th. However, because of low numbers in the primaries, concerns about voter turnout are being raised. During the primary race in June, just 22.3% of registered voters voted in Winnebago County and about 17.5% of voters in the city of Rockford. That's according to the League of Women Voters of Greater Rockford. Leaders from that organization say this could mean lower numbers for the gubernatorial election results as well. The big danger here is that when you have a vo low voter turnout, you tend to get the further extremes of both political parties. Coming up tonight at 6, we will hear from the Rockford Board of Elections and how this could affect you. Your 13 election authority is keeping track of a lot of races at the ballot box, but here's a look at a few that we're watching pretty closely. First, a new district for our area to vote on. Belvedere is now part of the 11th Congressional District after the 2020 census. This used to cover Joliet, Aurora, and parts of Naperville. Now it includes all of Naperville, Woodstock, and Belvedere. Democrat Bill Foster has held that seat for 10 years and is running again. He's opposed by Catalina Loff. Another representative seat is up for grabs in the 16th district. The seat opening up with Adam Kinzinger choosing not to run. Darren LaHood has represented the 18th district since 2015, but he now represents the 16th with the new district maps. He goes up against Elizabeth Hatterline, who has worked with recycling and land conservation in McHenry County since 1990. Another race is for Illinois' second Senate seat alongside Dick Durbin. Tammy Duckworth currently holds the seat and will face a challenge from Republican Kathy Salvi, Libertarian Bill Redpath, and Independent O.L. Sita. Several polls, including Emerson College and the Illinois Broadcasters Association, have Duckworth polling more than 10 percent ahead of her closest competitors. Here in Illinois, early voting is already in full swing, and there's still time to register to vote. Yeah, online voter registration closed just before midnight last night. However, you can still register in person through grace period registration and voting. Registration for all counties, including Boone, Lee, Ogle, Stevenson, and Winnebago, will be at their county clerk offices. They're open weekdays starting at 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. In just more than two weeks now until the critical decision 2022 midterm elections, you'll want to keep it right here on 13 WREX for our coverage alongside NBC News, bringing you the results, the issues, as well as the next steps. I'll turn into our weather. We're taking a look outside our WREX studios tonight, seeing a little cloud cover out there and a last little bit of warm temperatures. Yes, I can't believe the 70s are going to be leaving <laughs> us. Your Weather Authority meteorologist Kelsey Emery is with us tonight. And Kelsey, will that warm stick around or not? Unfortunately, the warm temperatures will not be staking around. We're seeing 70s across the board, so get out and enjoy the little bit of warmth we're seeing sticking around right now. 73 in Winnebago, 75 in Rockford, 73 in Rochelle, and 72 in Sublette. Now we're looking at a cold front moving through the area, and that's why we're having a having this these cloudiness for this afternoon. Now we will be seeing those rain showers move back into the the area overnight tonight and into tomorrow and then for the next couple of hours we will be seeing those temperatures dropping from the 70s back into the 60s with those clouds becoming thicker as well i'll be tracking those showers coming up in just a little bit in my full forecast but for right now back over to you guys all right kelsey we'll be looking out for those changes thank you developing tonight police in st louis say a gunman opened fire at one of the city's high schools three people including the gunman are dead and at least six Six others were wounded. Multiple victims were taken to a nearby hospital. Not far from the school were anxious parents and students waiting to be reunited. 
heartbroken for these families who send their children to our schools hoping that they will be safe. Our children shouldn't have to experience this. Investigators say the school's doors were locked and praised the school's security staff. Happening tonight, Freeport leaders hoping to give out important information about a big vote on your ballot next month. The topic at hand is home rule, which Freeport lost in the 2020 census because it does not have enough residents. The city can get that status back if voters give it to them at the ballot box. If approved, the city gets more power to keep taxes on things like sales tax and makes the city less dependent on the state for other matters. New at 5 tonight, some important information to share with you. I want to tell you about a phone scam targeting people right here in northern Illinois. Now, here's what you need to know. Scammers will call you posing as a deputy sheriff's, claiming there's an active warrant for your arrest. To avoid the so-called arrest, the scammer will try to get you to pay them in cash to avoid being taken to jail. The Lake County Sheriff's Office putting out this alert saying the callers are not real deputies and they may also be trying to attack people at their homes. If you received one of these calls, make sure you contact your local police department. And new tonight, grocery store chain Schnucks announces a new partnership with Instacart called Schnucks Now. Grocery store chain Schnucks announced that new partnership with Instacart in this expansion of its digital convenience offerings. Customers will benefit from grocery delivery in as fast as half an hour. The program is available during regular store hours and an order minimum of at least $10 is required. Still to come, gas prices might be falling, but there could be another problem developing. The shortage experts are worried about as we head into the winter months. Plus, firefighters from several local communities rushed to save a barn engulfed in flames. What well, we've just learned about the fire. And the helping hand a local hospital is getting from nurses representing their own country from thousands of miles away. And we've been seeing very warm temperatures for the past few days. That warmth is coming to an end soon. Find out when and why coming up in my full forecast up next. And for local news, weather, and sports in your schedule, make sure you download the 13 News app for your streaming device. We're live on Apple TV, Amazon's Fire TV, and Roku Media Players. And the best part, it's all free. Just search 13 WREX. You are watching 13 News at 5 with Brittany Hardaway, Derek Bain, and Chief Meteorologist Alex Kirchner from Your Weather Authority.
Gas prices are trending downward right now. Prices in Rockford have fallen nine cents in the last week with an average price of 414 a gallon. While it's a decline in the past week, prices remain just under 30 cents higher than they were a month ago and nearly 70 cents higher than a year ago. Experts are now concerned there's a home heating oil shortage that could raise your home gas bill this winter. Must see video of a barn fire in Lindenwood sent to 13 WREX last night. Go ahead and take a look at your screen right now. That fire happened near East Lindenwood Road just after 1030. Viewers tell 13 WREX they saw over 15 firefighters on scene coming from several surrounding communities. And we're getting you and your family ready for Halloween in the state line. It's going to be a fun one this year. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, Rochelle kicks off Halloween weekend by starting their hours on Saturday, October 29th from 5 to 8 p.m. On Monday, October 31st, actual Halloween day, Belvedere has the earliest hours in Boone County starting at 4 and ending at 8 p.m. You may want to start there and mm -hmm. get your candy Plan pile your route going. Out, you know? <laughs> yeah. In Stevenson County, Freeport's hours are 5 to 7 p.m. In Lee County, Dixon's trick-or-treating hours are from 5 to 7.30 and here in Rockford trick-or-treating hours run from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Now to see what time your community has announced for trick-or-treating this year, you can visit our website WREX.com. We have all that information posted. And the Beloit Sky Carp and mascot Poopsie are hosting their Halloween bash this Friday night. As you can see, the event will be full of treats, a little trick-or-treating, a costume contest, and of course a visit from Poopsie himself. It'll conclude with a showing of the movie Coco on the video board. So if you haven't seen that great movie and a fun way to watch that on the big screen at ABC Supply Stadium, tickets are $7 and gates open at 5 o'clock. All right, and if you're looking for another Halloween event, the Discovery Center in Rockford is getting into the Halloween spirit this weekend. They're hosting a spooky science event Friday night. You can put on your costumes and grab your trick-or-treat bags for a night full of science, slime, spider races, and pool noodle monsters. I don't even know what those are, but I'm sure the kids <laughs> will love cool it. noodles. They probably got them dressed up with some monster decor or ah, something, you know? <laughs> okay, okay, I got it. But it's all something you can create at that event, you and the entire family. It starts at 6 and it runs until 9 p.m. And coming up next, the new program being offered to make getting health care advice easier. Well, that's where we're looking downtown Rockford right now and we're seeing those clouds in the sky and we're going to be seeing those clouds increase as the night uh, ink goes on. We're going to be seeing the rain return to the forecast. I'll have the full forecast coming up in just a little bit.
Right now, new evidence of just how much COVID disruptions have cost students in the classroom, the stunning drop in math skills, and the revealing demonstration showing the danger of bigger cars, the critical blind spot putting kids at risk tonight. Well, new at 5, OSF Healthcare launches a new digital 24-7 nurse system for patients in the Rockford area. OSF Healthcare launched that system and that happened today. The program features a live nurse chat and phone line that easily connects patients to a skilled nurse to get medical advice and guidance to help find the right place to get care. The service is available to all residents in the Rockford area regardless of whether they've previously been a patient at OSF Healthcare. In positive local news tonight, a new group of nursing students from a high school in Sweden returned to Rockford to continue their studies. The students are alternating their time between Swedish American Hospital, where they're getting hands-on experience from the nursing field, and Guilford High School, where they're taking classes with the local students within the Health Academy. Yeah, the group of eight students and two instructors are in Rockford for two weeks to do some job shadowing and learn about the differences between healthcare in the U.S. and in Sweden. This is the first group back after the COVID. COVID pandemic. The program is part of a partnership between Lidköping, Sweden and the city of Rockford. New tonight, a U.S. Army veteran from Des Plaines who was killed during the Korean War was accounted for earlier this year and will now be buried in Belvedere. Army Corporal William Zulick, who was 18 at the time of his death, was from Des Plaines and served in infantry divisions in late 1950. In 1954, North Korea returned and remained and re remains from a prisoner of war camp. Dental and anthropological analysis was performed to determine that the remains were Zolik. He'll be buried in Belvedere November 10th. It's almost time to fall back and change your clocks for daylight saving time. As it stands, clocks are set to shift in less than two weeks, but the future of the annual time chain remains unclear. Here's a breakdown of how daylight saving time works. Daylight saving time will start in Illinois in a little under two weeks on November 6 at 2 a.m. In November, it's often referred to as the time in which clocks will fall back so that darkness falls at a later time. Daylight saving time lasts for a total of 34 weeks, running from the start of November to early to mid-March. Good evening, everyone, and hopefully you got out and enjoyed a little bit of some late season warmth. However, that warm and breezy conditions are ending with some rain tonight and into tomorrow. So we're going to be seeing those sh rainy sh rain showers coming in tonight and for tomorrow, which will be bringing those colder and more seasonable temperatures back into the state line for the time being. We've been seeing those temperatures rather warm most of the day, 75 degrees for your high, and it feels like it is in the 70s because of those south south southerly winds gusting about 14 miles an hour. So we are noticing that those gusts are rather strong from time to time. Now we're seeing those temperatures still rather warm for this time of night, 73 degrees right now in Rochelle, 75 in Rockford, 73 in Winnebago, and 72 in Mount Morris. And this is all because of a low pressure system that is located off the coast uh, off in Canada. Now we will be seeing those temperatures continue to drop into the 60s for the rest of the night. And we will be noticing those cloudy skies bringing some showers ahead. And that's all because of this low pressure system, like I mentioned. And last night we were noticing that that warm front was bringing some of those rain showers that you saw from last night into this morning. Now we are seeing this cold front off into Iowa and that's going to be sliding in bringing with it a large swath of rain and an end to our cold temperature or warm temperatures for the rest of the night. Temperatures tonight will be dropping back into the 50s, 57 degrees with mostly cloudy skies and showers. Those winds are still gusting from the south at 15 to 20 miles an hour, gusting to 30 miles an hour at times. Now we will be seeing those showers starting to tr trickle back into the state line right around uh, 7 p.m. or 8 o'clock p.m. And that's mainly for Joe Davies County. And we will be seeing those shift over into the parts of the central of the state line for Rockford, Freeport, Oregon, and even Dixon around the 10 o'clock hour. And then we do see a little bit of a break before we have more widespread rain coming in for the morning hours of Tuesday. So 8 a.m. we will be seeing those heavier rains showers. So make sure you do have that umbrella handy for the day tomorrow as it's going to be a cold one as we will be seeing those temperatures
temperatures barely warming from where we are tonight. 58 degrees for the day. It's really rainy and cooler. Perfect soup weather. So get your soup out for the night and we'll be having enjoying it for the day tomorrow. We will be seeing these temperatures start really cold for the day. Set 55 degrees for the day with rain showers. So you're going to need that umbrella handy throughout the morning hours if you're heading out to the bus stop tomorrow morning as well. Now for the next couple of days, you do see those temperatures staying in the mid to low upper 50s for the next couple of days. 58 on Thursday with sunny skies continuing throughout the rest of the week. And for your most accurate 10 day forecast, we will be seeing those 60s stick around for the next couple of days into next week for the long run and rather dry conditions up.